Howdy, and welcome to a quick video lecture about how to use lab number two for mean 410, mean 611. So if you are accessing uh, the virtual open access lab, uh, either from your own computer, your own device, or from somewhere off campus, uh, the first thing you need to make sure is that you're connected to the campus network and the most uh, the easiest way to do that is to make sure that you're connected with the Cisco VPN client, which uh, you can see is, at least on the MacBook, uh, is indicated by this little symbol that you see here in the icon tray. And when it has that little lock icon, it means that I now have a VPN, a virtual private network tunnel into the AM network uh, since I'm doing this from home. Uh, I first have to tunnel into the AM network and then from there I can connect to the virtual open access lab. So once you do that, you can then open a browser window and I open this one in a private browser window because I've already logged on and uh, uh, connected myself so that I can show you the next part. But you basically just wanna go to vol.tamu.edu. That'll take you to the virtual open access lab. Uh, and then when you get to that website, you then click on login and then of course, uh, well, then what you'll wanna do, um, you can either download the virtual machine software uh, directly to your, to your computer, but if you'd rather not do that and you'd rather just access the, the virtual open access lab through a web access web browser, then you click on this icon on the right. And then once you do that, it'll then take you to the connection page uh, where you'll be expected to enter your, uh, your username and your password. And then once you click on login, then of course you'll have to enter in the dual uh, passcode. Okay, so once you get yourself connected to the virtual open access lab, uh, then it's just a matter of uh, uh, you'll, you'll be taken to this screen here. This is basically the web access screen for the virtual open access lab. And you can see that there's several pieces of software that you can access directly from this Vol, um, uh, this, uh, Vol website. Uh, th but the software that you'll use for this class is not accessible through any of these icons. What you'll wanna do is go into the virtual open access lab. And this will basically take you to your desktop as if you were logged into a computer uh, on the a and network in, in one of the lab computers, okay? And so you can now see, uh, this is my desktop, for example, when I'm, when I'm connected to uh, the, uh, to, you know, when I'm connected to one of the lab computers. And so uh, at this point now, I, I have access to my, my uh, lab desktop, and so I can click on the start button here, and this will then take me to the list of software, and I basically scroll through this list of software until I find where that software is located, which is uh, under this folder here, ME636. Okay, so I click on this ME636 folder, and then you can see there's two uh, software, two pieces of software that are located there, AFTP, which you'll use for lab number three, and then the cycle software, which is what you'll use for lab number two. So we go ahead and click on that cycle software and then you get this opening screen here. Just go ahead and click on start. And then that opens up the thermodynamic cycle simulation software. Now for lab number two, uh, what you're gonna do, it's a very, um, it's a rather simple uh, cycle simulation that we'll do. You'll wanna click on this thermodynamic cycles button and you'll want to change your cycle type to one of the three constant volume with intake and exhaust. Uh, and then once you do those runs, you'll want to change it to constant pressure with intake and exhaust, and then finally limited pressure with intake and exhaust. So for this demonstration, I'll just do constant volume with intake and exhaust. You then will click on the cycle parameters, uh, and you can go ahead and, and adjust your inlet pressure to one bar, your exhaust pressure to one bar, leaving the inlet temperature to 300 Kelvin. And then here where you see compression ratio listed, this is what you're gonna vary by one unit compression ratio each time, starting from six and going up to 18, okay? Uh, and then you can also make an adjustment for your, uh, your um, heat input, the calculated heat input, 
uh, which uh, the text of the lab will recommend that you set that according to a compression ratio of 11. Okay, and so you calculate that heat input uh, and then you change your compression ratio to the starting compression ratio of six. You click OK. And then at this point, you're able to start running the software. So you can go ahead and click OK. And then to run the software, you simply hit the Run button. And you'll notice that uh, it says Ready here. Uh, when I click Run, it'll quickly show Running, and then it'll very quickly show Finished. It doesn't actually take long for the software to do these calculations. So I'll go ahead and click Run. Uh, and you, actually, it went so fast, you couldn't even see it, right? And so it you see that it's now indicated that the, the calculation is finished by this uh, um, indication up here at the top of the window. Now you have a set of data in the output file. So to see that, you click on the output menu option and then go to process parameters, okay? And so what you can see here now is uh, the cycle output, the cycle simulation output, and all of the uh, information that stays constant during the cycle calculation, such as uh, the, the type of the cycle, the working fluid being an ideal gas, the gas constant, gamma, the ratio of specific heats, uh, and then of course the one that we're actually varying, which is compression ratio, you can see that listed here. And if you scroll down, you, you'll notice that all of the state parameters for the various states of the calculation are provided. So there's state one parameters, there's state two, three, four, all the way to um, state seven parameters, okay? And so you can go in and pick off the various state information. Uh, and then the uh, software will also calculate all of the process parameters, the work and heat transfer terms for each of the various processes. And then finally, it'll calculate the cycle performance parameters, such as the, uh, the indicated work, the indicated efficiency, IMEP, uh, so on and so forth, okay? Okay, so you'll be able to pick all this information off when, uh, um, when you import this into your uh, data files, okay? Okay, so now to do that export of this data, you have one of two options. You can either select all the data and then copy and paste it into your favorite spreadsheet software, such as Microsoft Excel. Or you can run all of your cycles as much as possible and then go to with your with your mouse selecting the finished to window the process parameters window so let me show you what i mean by that if i put my mouse on this window and i click on it left mouse click on it you'll notice that it highlighted right so you want to make sure that your results window is highlighted okay so you just put your mouse on it and click on it and then you go to file and you click on save results and it'll then open up this option to save your data file as a tab delimited text file. And so you can just go ahead and drop this on uh, whichever folder you want to, right? I'm calling it test just for this demonstration and then go ahead and click save. Now, when you open that test file, you'll notice that uh, if it opens in say a notepad file, which it's trying to, it's trying to open that right now. Let's see if I, oh, there it goes, okay. It's, it's asking me which, which uh, folder to, um, to save it in, or which program to use to open it, excuse me. So I accidentally clicked off of it and I don't know where it went to. See if I can try it again. Okay, there we go. Um, and so we might be able to open it with something like Notepad although it doesn't look like, oh, there it is. Okay, so we can go ahead and open this with Notepad. And then you can see, of course, that all of the data is listed there. Now, of course, you can also import this into Excel, right? And so I, I gather that you know how to import a tab delimited file into Excel. And so you can just open up Microsoft Excel, for example, and just drag and drop this into uh, the Excel program. So I'll, I'll go ahead very quickly and, uh, and show you that. So we can open up Excel here. <clears throat> it takes a little while when, when you do this over the 
uh, virtual open access lab. And so we can we can minimize this a bit. And then just grab your text file and drop it over and Excel will automatically import that data file for you. Okay. Okay. So that uh, is after one run, right? But what's nice is that you can, once you do one run, you can go ahead and change your compression ratio to the next compression ratio. Click OK, click OK, and then run the software again. And now it'll go through and do all of your calculations for you for the next compression ratio, compression ratio of seven. And you can correspondingly see how all of the data changes as a result of us changing the compression ratio. Okay, and so you can go ahead and just continue to increase your compression ratio uh, each step of the way and just continue to run your cycle. Okay, now I did get some feedback that for at least one of you, the software was crashing. And so what I would encourage you to do, just so that you don't waste your time, is that as you go along, you go ahead and save, perhaps after every single, uh, after every single cycle simulation, you go ahead and save this. And so for some reason, that's not saving for me. I'm not entirely sure. I think maybe it's because I'm trying to duplicate this uh, being saved. Maybe I need to put a .txt in there. Oh, it just created a new file. So anyway, you, you can sort it out how you want to do it. Uh, but um, the, the basic message is make sure that you save frequently so that as you're doing this, uh, the, these various calculations, then you don't lose any of your data if, if the software happens to crash. I'm not entirely sure why it's crashing. Uh, but just be mindful of that and save your data as frequently as possible. So you'll go ahead and do all of those uh, compression ratios up to 18. And then once you get up to 18, you then can change your cycle to the next cycle, say the constant pressure cycle, and return your uh, compression ratio to 6. And then proceed to do your uh, calculations uh, with a compression ratio of um the, the compression ratio sweep uh, for the constant pressure cycle, okay? Okay, so that is uh, the demonstration of the software and, and I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, just uh, send me an email or feel free to put a comment into the comment section and uh, we'll be sure to get that addressed. All right, have a great day.